it flows from spigots in our kitchens and bathrooms. We expect it to be safe to drink. We trust treatment plants to remove any harmful impurities that might work their way into the system. But in March 1993, hundreds of thousands of Milwaukee residents became ill from drinking their household water. Grocers sold out of bottled H2O, and Milwaukeeans anxiously lined up to receive purified water. One local health official in early April described the situation in Milwaukee as a near panic because so many people were going to their doctors, so many people were showing up at emergency rooms and hospitals with intestinal illnesses. We had all been asked, something going on, my neighbor's sick, my child's sick, and we actually, as we began to look around, we noticed a number of co-workers weren't around, and that's kind of a flag to us that, in fact, it's more than just a flu. There may be something actually happening. Within two months, 100 died, and more than 400,000 suffered illnesses ranging from diarrhea to fever to vomiting. I think it's important for people to take that precaution and bo boil water and uh, either for drinking or for washing food. Investigators discovered the majority of suffering residents were receiving water from the Howard Avenue treatment plant, one of two facilities serving 800,000 Milwaukee citizens. The Howard plant treated more than 100 million gallons of water per day. Its main supply intake was located three and a half miles away in Lake Michigan. Was there indeed something in the water causing the problem? The first week of April, a physician tested specimen from a patient for a specific parasite, the protozoan cryptosporidium, and found it, contacted other physicians and health officials. They tested other samples, confirmed that it was cryptosporidium. Cryptosporidium, shown here, is a microscopic parasite, more commonly found in animals than human beings. It's a one-celled creature. It multiplies in the intestines of infected humans or animals. It comes out of those intestines in the feces, comes out in a little egg-like packet called an oocyst, and that's the infectious stage for the next person who ingests it. Tests of water samples from the Howard Avenue plant showed the presence of cryptosporidium. The parasites may have entered the water as the result of several factors. And those things that I think about as occurring was, were heavy rains falling on icy uh, ground. So there's a lot of water runoff into rivers, creating a lot of muddy water. Also potentially bringing in cryptosporidium oocyst, the infectious stage of cryptosporidium into those, those waters. Then that water being taken into a water treatment plant that wasn't filtering their water in an optimal way. Filters at Milwaukee's Howard Avenue treatment plant, like those in most of the U.S., were made up of layers of fine-grained sand designed to catch any foreign substance. Milwaukee health officials acknowledged that the sand had not been maintained properly. Filter beds needed to be cleaned. They could have been cleaned more often. There are turbidity monitors and sensors that could have been placed in more spots along the process, so you would have had more continuous monitoring of the water quality. We had more of an intermittent monitoring of the water quality. You need to think of a water treatment plant filter more like a, a bucket with holes punched in the bottom full of sand. This bucket happens to be a 20-foot by 20-foot pool, but it's the same principle. And no matter how tightly you pack those little grains of sand, there's still microscopic holes in those grains of sand. And those holes are much bigger than the OO cyst. In order for sand filters to work properly, water must first be treated with chemicals to make the tiniest impurities bond with others to form particles large enough to be caught by the filtration system. This bonding process was not working sufficiently in Milwaukee, allowing cryptosporidium to slip through the cracks. 
There were upgrades to the plant that could have been made that hadn't. Milwaukee was very proud of its water. We'd been making products from water. We'd been drinking clean water out of Lake Michigan for well over 100 years. And in retrospect, I think we were a little complacent that those improvements hadn't been made. There was no reason to make them. There was nothing to believe that anything was wrong. Once cryptosporidium was determined to be the cause of the problem, then came the tougher question, how to get rid of it. Just as the process for cryptosporidium to enter the system was highly complex, so was the fix. They made a lot of changes in their whole operation. Uh, number one, they did correct the coagulation pretreatment process, so they got the turbidity down where it should have been. Number two, they invested a lot of dollars in a new chemical treatment process that would kill oocysts called ozonization. Ozone is a much more powerful uh, disinfectant than chlorine is, but it's very expensive to produce. And the third major change they made is changing the location of their water intake. Prior to the outbreak, the water intake was close to where the rivers and sewage plant discharged their, their waters, and they were drawing some of that water back in that intake. They now moved that intake quite a ways uh, away from that. The uh, Center for Great Lakes Studies and the Great Lakes Research Facility, which is behind us here on the Inner Harbor, they participated in a study that indicated that if they extended that water intake pipe less than a mile, just eight-tenths of a mile, more out into the lake, they would avoid 98% or more of the possible pollutants that would be flowing along the near shoreline. So that moved them out of that plume of contaminants that regularly flow along the shoreline. So that also helped avoid another outbreak in some future spring. <laughs> when the fix was complete in Milwaukee, the Howard Water Treatment Plant became one of the most advanced in the nation. But the solution came at great cost, both in lives and dollars. There's been a lot of debate whether or not the people of Milwaukee needed to spend $80 million to convert their water treatment plants to the ozone process. But given the intensity of this outbreak, the number of people that were affected, the deaths that we mentioned, the people of this town really demanded that the water treatment plants in Milwaukee be upgraded to the best of their ability and were willing to spend the $80 million to do so. The delicate balance between risk and expense will always be a source of controversy. But Milwaukee public health officials are confident they've made the right decision. They know the alternative. People ask me this all the time. Um, will it ever happen again? Could it ever happen again? Well, the ozonation process that we've installed makes it very unlikely. But I still have enough public health and science in me to say you never say never. The Milwaukee water treatment disaster made many American cities examine and upgrade their own methods of filtration. Few have gone to the trouble and expense of a total system overhaul like that of Milwaukee. But there is no doubt that the quality of tap water across the nation has improved as the result of one city's tragic engineering disaster.